Hello and welcome to my tutorial on acids, bases and salts. So an acid is quite basically a proton donor and a proton is a H plus ion. And the common acids that acids that you need to know for AS chemistry are sulfuric, sulfuric hydrochloric acid and nitric acid. Ethanoic acid is an example of organic chemistry that you will cover later on in the, in the course and me methanoic acid and citric acid are quite commonly found in insect bites and citrus spur citric acid and what an acid basically does is when it's added to water it releases two ions a Cl- ion and a H- ion for hydrochloric and most importantly that they always release H- ions the H plus ions is an active ingredient in all, all acids and they are responsible for all acid reactions and an acid is a proton donor so this brings on, us on to our next part bases um, bases are proton acceptors now once you have enough pr protons lying about um, a chemical reaction can occur with a base and an acid to neutralize each other as a as a base to the opposite end of the acid they neutralize them and they accept protons so if I had a really acidic solution and then I put a base in, into it so I'll call this my acidic solution and this is my base and I put A plus B equals a new thing called C but this would be completely neutralized because they, they, put, they would both cancel each other out if they were both equal concentrations um, so the examples of bases are metal hydroxides and metal oxides like magnesium oxide and copper oxide and sodium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide you'll get to know and love and it's pretty much the one that you must remember magnesium hydroxide is another also another very common one that they ask in exam questions but amines like this one here C3, C3 NH2 are also bases because of the willingness to bond to two extra hydrogen atoms with the nitrogen atom, as nitrogen is good on good on column five of the periodic table, and they can have five. They have five, five bonded electrons in the outer shell, so only two of them are being used up. So in theory, another three could, sorry, another two could bond on because it's one's bonded to carbon and two are bonded to each hydrogen. So now we're moving on to part three. Alkalis. So alkalis are any chemical compound that have a pH greater than neutral, 7.0 when dissolved in water. So the common alkalis are sodium hydroxide again, um, potassium hydroxide and ammonia. Alkalis are very corrosive and even more so than acid. So when you put an alkali into water you get OH- ions which is the active ingredient in all alkalis and a metal ion. So in a solution, it, um, water can also be can be made H plus plus OH minus equals H2O, and that's why earlier on acids and alkalis can neutralize each other. So now I'll just talk about biolo how biological molecules can be both bases and acids, like this one here. This amino acid has a carboxyl group which is acidic because it's got an OH can make OH minus ions when it's soluble in water and fine. And H plus ions are there for acid and a base because it can accept those H plus ions and turn into water. Now if you look at ammonia now, it is a very, very weak base. And when you put that into water it will be in 
using dynamic equilibrium to make NH4 plus ions and the OH minus ion that we all know and love. So equally if I had this in equal concentration I can make ammonia and water again. It's only a weak base because it has, it's a small proportion that the dissolved ammonia reacts with the water and it's in dynamic equilibrium. It's only weak because it makes these two products and it's in a lower concentration than more than water would be. Um, and the alkali then for AS is Na sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide and ammonia itself. Now moving on to part three and how they form salts. So as so sulfuric acid forms salts like this, it makes a makes a, a sulfate, potassium sulfate there on the right hand side. So hydrochloric acid if I added um, sodium to it, it would make sodium chloride there. And for nitric acid I would have two moles to make two of these nitrate groups. Not, not whatever, nitro groups. NO3 is nitro, so you need two of them to make a nitrate. There. So definition is now a salt is an ionic compound formed from an acid when a H plus ion from the acid has been replaced by a metal ion or another positive metal ion such as the ammonium ion at NH4 plus. And a cation is a positively charged and ion is negatively charged. And moving on to part seven. We have all the different reactions for carbonates and bases. So for carbonates, if I had uh, calcium carbonate to hydrochloric acid, I would get calcium chloride plus water plus CO2. And the ionic equation would be 2H plus plus calcium, calcium carbonate rather makes the calcium 2 plus ion plus H2O plus CO2. And for bases, if I added 2HCl2 calcium oxide, it would make the same product, calcium chloride plus H2O, but the ionic equation is ever so slightly different. It doesn't make H2O on the right hand side, the two H plus ions neutralize to make water, and the calcium 2 plus ion is the same as before. Now from alkalis, we have hydrochloric acid and NaOH, sodium hydroxide, we make sodium chloride and water again. So the ionic equation is quite simply the one that we I introduced to you earlier on in the tutorial. H plus plus OH minus equals H2O. So moving on now to the next part, the final part. We have ammonia plus nitric acid could make can make this an ammonium salt. So ammonium salts contain the NH4 plus ion found in all the common salts. Now, they, the examiners want you to calculate um, these ammonium salts, but it's it's knowing how to calculate percentage compositions is what they're really after here, as they don't usually ask about ammonium salts quite as much, but it's the application of this that they're stressing towards the application of your chemistry skills, your manipulation of moles and all that. So using the periodic table I determined that nitrogen was 14, H4 is 1 times 4 which is 4, and nit nitrogen again which is 14 which make 2 of these make 28, and 16 times 3 to 28 plus, 16 times 3 is 80 grams per mole, and to work out the mass of nitrogen on its own, or the mass rather, is 2 times 14, which is 28 grams per mole. So to work out your percentage of nitrogen, you put over the amount, of, the amount of nitrogen over the total amount of your compound times 100, and it gives you exactly 35%. So that one was a fairly simple example, but if you stick around for some of my past paper um, questions, then so they they could get quite complicated. So I hope you found this useful and
thank you for watching. Goodbye.